Happy Friday, guys. What have we got going on today here at Barham Engines? We find out how costly this BDA rally engine really is going to be once we've removed the crankshaft. Is it really worth fitting these ductile iron liners in a race engine? Today we explain why it is. So guys, it is take the crankshaft out of the BDA engine. Time. Isaac has removed one com rod at the moment, number two. I have, yes. And so far, so good, would we well, say? It's all right, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. The bearings are sort of through to this copper back end, which is sort of the last layer of proper bearing material, really. Before isn't it? you get down to the steel back end, yeah. isn't it? So you know so, when you're through to the copper, it's on its last legs yeah, before so that's, it starts damaging a journal. Yeah, so that's when you might want to start replacing them yeah um i did notice that the bolts were already quite loose so okay i'm so assuming we're it's assuming been at this point either taken this apart it's been taken apart and threw back together either I've, that or it's um i shouldn't imagine it's run like that because no, the journal they're looks very too loose good. um and to be fair there was only two or three sump bolts in there so i think the sump's already been off and right, they okay had a little look now i did notice in the last video mate in the comments now, I'm not an expert on these BDAs, not like I am on the Cosworths, um, but I'm not sure, one, what internals they're meant to have, but that does look like an aftermarket crank to me. It does, Whether yeah. it is or whether it isn't, don't know. I would have thought it is, being the rally car that it, um, it is, and it does look like a, a pretty trick crankshaft for the period it does, of it. It does, yeah. Um, but also, someone did state in the comments that the difference between the 2 litre and the 1800 yeah. So I was calling this what looked like a two litre, but I'm sure they were saying that a two litre is an alley block and the 1800s cast block. Might be wrong there. If you guys want to head back into the last video and have a look at the comments, you can um, confirm whether I'm right or wrong there. But yeah, I didn't I think, know that. I didn't even know they did a I cast think block. I think the alley block is the BDG. Right. I think that's what they were saying in the comments. Okay. And the, the one that's cast is the BDA. Right. I think, anyway. Okay. Pretty sure that's what they said. So um, just notice this doesn't look too good. Ah, so it's that looks... a bit loose. Is it like the wrong size bearing? No, nope, that looks like or... it's been hammered to me. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, what yeah. is, what's the other bearing got on? Because this has got a, this is like a 10, which means it's been ground 10 thou. So this crank has definitely been ground in the past. The journal doesn't look too bad. It looks all right, really. Visually, but what it measures, I don't know. But it certainly doesn't... That looks like a hammered bearing, so it's gone. You probably find that this has got a coating on this bearing um, and it's gone through to the copper back in, but it's actually hammered out because it's misshapen where it goes into the rod. It should go into the com rod with a bit of a snug fit. Yeah, it should be quite tight. But when it's loose and just falls out, it means that the thing has probably been hammered. Um, so but usually one. you will get a sign on this journal that doesn't look too great. So that says 10 as well. That's 10 That's as well. 10. So it has been properly so ground. So it has been ground to 10 at some point, which means it's, if it's an aftermarket crank, it's definitely been ground because it wouldn't have been that as standard. So it must have had a build at some point. Yeah. After the build that it's had with this crank in, I would say. But so then you it think it's fairly old, isn't it? It's gonna yeah. be bad. You reckon that that is an aftermarket? Crank I don't deal. know, I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. Best, best person to speak to for me would be Charlie at CTM, I would say, because yeah, probably. He Charlie's been in the game a lot longer than we have. Well, and, and he knows um, he, he all knows sorts his, of Ford engines, not just Cozzies and that. He so. knows his old Fords, he does. Charlie is the one that is um, getting together the bits for our BDA engine for the Mark II Escort van. So excited about that. I spoke to Charlie yesterday um, because he's got a box of various bits for us. A couple of ported heads he's done. One for the Lotus, uh, the one that was partially ported. He's finished that and he's done the Cosworth that is for this engine here, which is in return. The build is in return for the Mark II Escort that we've got. So he's done the porting for that for me and he's also balanced the crank assembly for this Rover V8 which we are going to probably mention in one of next week's videos because we've got to build the short motor on that. So that's going to be interesting, mate. Yeah. So Charlie's your man. CTM performance. He definitely is. Knows his stuff, mate. He does. So piston-wise, yeah. the rings are nicely stuck in the grooves there. Okay. It's probably just water being sat in the balls, isn't it? 
It could be, yeah. Just over time, they just you get a bit of rust on the steel ring there, and it's um, because it's a steel, probably a chromium top ring, so you get a bit of rust in there. Yeah. Um, it's a very limited amount of clearance between the top ring and the groove, anyway. So if you get a bit of corrosion build up, it just widens the thickness of the ring, and it's stuck in there. You probably find if a bit of persuasion, and they will come free. But the piston looks pretty new to me. It doesn't look like Those. it's done a great deal of work. The Cosworth pistons. Cosworth pistons, which mean, oh yeah, you can just see it in there. It's which a bit means grubby. potentially they are probably a bit of an old school piston, I would say. Yeah. I wouldn't mind betting if you measured those pistons, they're probably a bit of a weird running clearance on those. You reckon? Maybe. They normally a bit odd, are they? On the? Yeah, depending on the part number of the piston, some of those are That's a pretty funny. old design, and they don't even list them anymore. But yeah. So so far so good, mate. I think mm. next, next step, once you've got them off, is um, whip a couple of mains off and see what we've got in there, isn't it? Yeah. But so far, it looks like the crank could be salvageable. Yeah, Which hopefully. is going to save us quite a lot of money. Well, I can't imagine a crank for one of these being cheap. Well, it's going to be at least sort of 1,500 be, quid if you had one made. It's going to be isn't it, really? Yeah, it'd be quite a lot of money. Whip them caps off and we'll have a look inside. Yeah. So, all the mains are off, all the rods are out. Yep. What's it looking like? Not too bad in terms of what the actual crank is looking like. It all feels nice and smooth, as it should. No scoring or any obvious damage. Okay, which but is I good. But I did notice on number three on the main, Yeah, that bearing's fairly chewed up. Looks a bit chewed, mate. Looks like a bit of oil starvation at some point there. Yep. Or Maybe something gone through there, but then I'd, it's more like your oil starvation because it's got that Starts, channel to collect dirt. Yeah, it's starting so, to tear, isn't it? Yeah. So that's normally what that is. Is there a size on that bearing, mate? Do we so know what? Look, looking like standard. Is it? Standard on these bearings, you'd normally have STD on there. Not sexually transmitted disease. No. Well, it says Ford and got the Vandervel. That's a Van der Velle, isn't Yeah, it? so you should, sometimes, if it's, it's, got the, if it's an original Van der Velle Ford and it's got no plus 010 or something like that. It could be standard, mate. Yeah. So bar measuring this thing, when we finally get it out, uh, we don't know what it is, but we're assuming the mains are standard. The big ends are at 10, so it is looking pretty good at the moment. Yeah. And providing that um, those big ends are not disastrous, which just they look, visibly you they can look normally right, tell. Yeah. They normally, if it's not an end good and proper, it'll start to go black around the webbing and it will look proper horrible, won't it? Yeah, it goes black because of all the heat generated, yeah. doesn't it? So, um, but that was weird with that hammered out one, which was on here. That looks all right, really. It's yeah, you can see where it's got a little bit of browning on yeah, the on journal the there. Journal. So it's probably, they've probably just caught it or it's just yeah. started knocking, mm. maybe. Yeah, maybe that's, it why it came, early. maybe that's why it's come in, really. Just a bit yeah, lucky. so it's all good on the crank, hopefully. Yeah. Um, next step, get the crank out, etc. We're going to start measuring them bores, seeing what pistons are available. Um, probably hone out one of the bores very slightly just to see if it cleans with those rust marks. Not yeah. looking good. Um, then we're going to start pricing up bits and getting back to the customer. So you lovely lot, I have almost finished boring this Mini 1600. This is the mon modern Mini 1600 16 valve BMW engine. We've almost finished machining it out now for the liners. Now these, they don't do a specific liner to go in these as standard. And you can see a very slight witness at the back there. You see that where it's dark and goes into the light. So the light is the aluminium and the dark there is and you can see the little um, sort of it looks like little lines well that is the original machining of the block and what they do is they cast a cast iron liner into this block now a lot of these aluminium blocks that have got various different material bores they use different methods to put a, a cylinder wall into the aluminium block some of them use an aliasil some of them use a cast in cast iron as this does and some uses like a cast iron separate liner like we're putting in this really um, they put that in there as standard but a lot of them we find the uses a cast iron liner that has been cast into the aluminium block and the little lines around the back there are little serrations which hold the liner in and stop it from slipping out and gives it basically gives it something to key into um, so 
We are machining these out. Now, what I wanted to do is machine the block first to make sure it all fully cleans. Now, the reason we've got a little witness in the back there, it's not a lot, um, it's next to nothing, but we can't machine it out any more than that because you can see how thin it's going down the middle. So what will happen in a minute if we're not careful is it will go completely through there um, and then we've got no support for the liner. So we need to keep something in between here to keep the support for the liner. So what we'll do is we'll probably push in two or three first and then the end ones afterwards. So I've had a chat with Westwood. They don't do a specific liner. We want to get some ductile line liners in. So the ductile line liner is, as opposed to the cast iron liner, um, is a sort of a forged liner really, um, as opposed to it being cast. The difference is the structure of the cast iron is different. Um, it's all sort of going the same way, if you like, a bit like a forged piston, which makes it stronger. So that's why we want this. This is gonna be a race engine. Um, and that's the reason we put ductile iron liners in the race engines. One, because they're tougher, a bit like when you use a forged piston, it's just tougher, takes more load, um, and is a bit less likely to crack. With a cast, line, cast iron liner, because it is cast, the, the molecular, I think, it's, I think I'm right here, the molecular structure is sort of all over the shop. So it's really, there's no strength there as such. Um, and it can just force to be cracked. Please correct me down in them comments if I am wrong there, guys. I suspect some of you are gonna say, what are you talking about, Lee? Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and it just makes for a tougher liner. Same as the pistons, really, when they're forged as opposed to cast. It's all about the, the grain of the material going in the same direction, which makes them stronger. So that is the reason that we put them in a race engine. The problem is with the cast iron liner as standard, when it's cast in, it's really thin, as opposed to a cast iron liner that has been put in separate, which has got a bit of meat in there. It's that bit of meat that has got the strength. The aluminium has not really got the strength. So it's a bit like the aliasil bores. When you start running decent power, they end up cracking. Um, and the only mod really is to put a, a, um, a ductile iron liner in there, like a steel liner, if not. Um, they used to, the, the old fad used to be the Nicosil liner, which is a very hard coating. Um, and it's great for the coating, but it's great on the surface. It's nice and hard, but the problem was you'll find in um, when they get hot, like under high boost applications and stuff like this, um, the, it was only a coating on the cylinder. So that would end up flaking off. And it was some of the problems they were having in like the V8 BMWs, the M3, is it the M3s, I think they were a bit like it and they were suffering with um, like the coating flaking off. So that is the reason nowadays everyone goes for the ductile iron liner. Um, there's no risk of it flaking off. They're very tough um, and they seem to serve the purpose. So what we do is we obviously, whatever block it is we put them in, we machine them out first to see how much width we've got and how much strength is in the block, how big the flange needs to be at the top. Obviously, we like to do a flange at the top because it stops the liner from, from pulling through and also acts as another seat for the head gasket to go in. So the firing will sit on the steel liner as opposed to the aluminium, like the original, um, and less likely to blow in the future. And it's sort of, you can withstand a bit more heat so that's the reason we do that. So what I've done here is I'm sort of working with Westwood who have not got a specific set of liners for this. You can see where we've machined out in the middle of those three there. Um, so what we're gonna have to do there is we're gonna have to have flats on either side of the center two and one side of the M1. And what you do is when you put them in, those flats will meet together. Um, and that just gives you a bigger diameter flange and also creates a little bit of a um, a sort of bracing where the liners will butt up against each other at the top um, and it's just less likely for the liners to sort of move side to side at the top and create gasket issues and, and cracking at the top because they tend to crack at the top a lot of the time. So that is the reason we do it, especially for the race engines guys with these aluminium blocks. The advantage with the aluminium blocks is obviously the weight for racing. We know that weight is everything so the less weight you've got, the less power you've got to have to create the same speed. Um, so they go for a nice, nice light engine, 
nice lightweight. The trouble is you've got to reinforce the bits with sort of steel really. So that's why another mod for a, an aluminium block would be a steel cap conversion if it hasn't already. It'd probably have a, like a cast, but what they do is put a steel main cap on there and then get it line bored through. That's what they do a lot of the time. Um, it enables them to run like a different bolt, put more pressure on there. So that is one major reason that we put these ductile iron liners in the, these blocks, guys. So what I've done here is I've machined it out now. I'm gonna to continue to do my measurements. I've been doing measurements by the cuts I'm doing. Um, and then what you do is go onto the Westwood um, website, Westwood Liner website, and on there, they've got bespoke liner page. And you go on there, they've got a, a form which you fill out. So they've got a picture, I'll actually show you. So there it is, guys, this is on the Westwood liners um, website and you go to the bespoke liners page there and on here you have a drawing a diagram with the letters representing the the, um, the diameters and the lengths of the liner um, and you've got a series of boxes here with like your finished bore size a which would be this diameter here and you just fill up fill out that in in imperial or metric whichever you're working in you put in all your details how many liners you want etc and they will make those liners to suit. So you can order a full set of bespoke liners for whatever you're gonna put in. Um, and they are taking at the moment through Westwood about three to five weeks, something like that, um, or depending, because obviously there's a big demand on bespoke liners. They deal with the engine reconditioners from all over the place. So um, they're a fairly big company. Um, and I am working with Westwood on these minis. Obviously they, haven't got these particular liners on the shelf so if anyone wanted them they're gonna to have to wait about five weeks as opposed to them being on the shelf where you can wait a couple of days it makes a hell of a difference so i'm working with them i just want to get these liners right um, using me as a bit of a test dummy and then they're going to make a load stick them on the shelf so they're ready avail readily available for everyone else including myself because we're having more and more sort of um, inquiries on these minis now because they are a quite a troublesome engine um, so yeah, working with them on that, guys. So that is the reason we, uh, that is how we order liners. And that is the reason why we put these ductile iron liners in a race engine or any engine at all. Well, guys, that is it for another week, I'm afraid. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Remember to subscribe to our channel, guys. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and um, we will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Thank you.